Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, uh, four new knives from the James brand uh, with Rosewood and Damasteel, Luft Concepts, Avant, and then we have 12 folders with neutral handles. My top. Uh, I have come to really va uh, value the neutral handle. I think when I first got into collecting knives, I was impressed with as many finger choils and as much sort of contouring and ergonomics in the handle uh, as they could pack in. And over time, uh, I've begun to sort of shed that a little bit and, and really value the neutral handle. So we're going to take a look at that. Uh, but first, the first opportunity of the week to show off a knife. Okay, what am I carrying today? One of them uh, really is in keeping with the neutral handle theme today, uh, but my pocket knife is not. Today I have the SMF on me. Uh, this is the CC or concealed carry version. This is the Strider SMF. SMF is the larger one. The SNG is the smaller one. And uh, you can tell just by looking at it uh, by the screws here. If it's got three screws, it's an SMF. If it's got two screws on the body up here, it's an SNG. And they're proportioned pretty much exactly the same. So it's hard to tell in a picture. And that's one way you can tell. Uh, really like this knife. I got this one from Zellrick uh, a couple years back. Concealed carry, the CC designation, uh, refers to this. If you look at it in cross section, it's much thinner than the standard Lego handle version. And it's contoured. You see that? So it's uh, easier to carry and to conceal. I had uh, the first Strider I had was an SMF Lego handle. And if you don't know, Lego handle is just a squared off handle. It does the same thing here where the uh, show side G10 scale and the backspacer are one int integral piece. And then you have the um, titanium side screwed to this side. Same thing, except instead of contouring it, making it comfortable, <laughs> it's a big blocky, uh, uh, but charismatic knife. I'll put it that way. I did end up getting rid of it. And then later, uh, the opportunity to have this one in S30V came along. I uh, snatched it up. Excuse me. need a little sip here. Mm. I have... Um, I have a criticism of this knife, and it's uh, it's kind of a minor one, but it's also kind of a major one. It has to do with the pocket clip. Uh, I love the way it looks. I don't mind the non-deep carry nature of it. What I mind <clears throat> is that uh, where it makes contact with the handle is right in front of, here, let me close this so I don't cut myself, is right in front of the lock bar cutout. And so when putting it in my jeans, pulling it out, the material, the seam especially, tends to gather in this little pocket that's milled out there to give tension to this side, to this lock bar. And it gets locked in behind the clip. And uh, so you'll end up drawing this thing out. <clears throat> and as you do, it tugs on your pocket and your pants go way up. And, uh, you know, you really, it's, it's best with thin pants. Let me put it that way. Uh, if you like those big tactical pants with the giant seams, uh, which I don't because I don't like trying to get a, a clip over it, uh, it'll be a problem. But in any case, that's a small criticism of this classic knife. I know people are hot and cold with the Striders. I think this one is awesome. Uh, next is definitely in keeping with the neutral handle theme. And this is my BGM Knives Quaken, a uh, prized custom knife, you know, if you're new to this show, the last year, I guess, I've been I've been kind of taking off into the world of custom fixed blade knives and uh, really enjoying it. And I, uh, uh, I, I don't want to say I discovered. That sounds terrible. The, uh, I discovered for myself BGM Knives, John Miller, uh, and he was uh, one of the viewers said, you got to check this guy out. His stuff is awesome. And uh, lo and behold, it is. I had to make me his signature, one of his signature designs the Quaken. And uh, while I was carrying it today and yesterday, I was trying it out on the, uh, on the cord. Uh, so what I do is put this around my belt, loop it around my belt, and then sit this, sit this into the waistband. And it just sort of stays there. 
pinched between my belt and my body. And then it's not going to like fall down my leg or anything like that because it's attached and under tension with this cord. And then if you need it, you just grab it and you pull it. And about uh, when your arm is about half extended, it reaches the end of this cord. And here, all right, yeah, this is a better camera to show it in. Uh, you pull it and it it just pops out. And then the, the sheath ends up dangling by your side, but you've got your knife in your hand. And uh, I really, I think that's a cool way to carry. I first saw that, uh, well, I saw that years back, but uh, this is the first time I've done it in a long time. And it really works for this knife, I gotta say. Uh, I tried to get a concealed carry concept clip uh, that I have on this one. I need to just buy a different uh, configuration of the clip to match the holes. Um, so I tried out this debt cord and it really does work well. Uh, so this is a super new, this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about neutral handles here. Look at this. It's just two parallel lines. And as uh, a lot of people are fond of noting, we are creatures optimized for holding sticks. We are, we are a hunting platform. We are built on a hunting chassis and our hands are meant to grip neutral stick-like items. So though contoured handles with different uh, different flares and dips and stuff are gratifying to hold. Really, there's nothing more primal than a neutral handle. You grab it, it's like you're grabbing a stick. Whoop. It's like you're back in your caveman days. So that's my story and I'm sticking with it. BGM knives, this one's made out of 3V. It's hollow ground, super thin, super thin. And the other day uh, I got a bee in my bonnet. I decided to it came to me sharp. I decided to get it absolutely positively razor sharp because uh, it's it's kind of ground like a straight razor. Very, very thin. We have another knife coming up that I'm going to show off that's ground impressively thin like a straight razor. But this one also, especially for a 3V uh, fixed blade, you know, utility kind of thing. Um, so I uh, ran it across uh, some of the stones on my sharp maker and just got it even more wickedly sharp. So this is a great knife. Um, I carried it, uh, I've been carrying it for days, uh, starting with a barbecue this past weekend. I thought maybe I'd have to cut some meat. I wanted to try this one out. As it turned out, it was a hamburger uh, barbecue. So no meat needed to be cut, which was unfortunate. Uh, no, but the hamburgers were delicious. The knife was comfortable to carry in the short hot day, even against my uh, my skin. So. That's what I was carrying today. What were you carrying today? Let me know. Call the listener line, 724-466-4487. Leave a message. Uh, I've been getting a message recently, and uh, I responded to it, but they haven't seemed to get my message. And it was kind of like, uh, yeah, I need a, I need an appointment with Antonio, I think, or something like that. Uh, it sounds like someone's calling a hairdresser, and they've, they've got the wrong number. So you call, and leave me, you know, fill, fill up this message bin with good knife messages. Not like, uh, Joey, why haven't you called me back, Joey? Why don't we go out no more? I don't need any more of those messages. I need messages like today I was carrying my uh, Benchmade Freak and, uh, you know, a Crooked River, something like that. That's what I'd like to hear. All right. So uh, you can also leave a comment below or send me an email. Uh, so I was speaking with Doug Ritter. I was speaking with Doug Ritter the other day. Um, I didn't mean it to sound like that. Uh, knife world name dropping. Um, but uh, I was talking to Doug Ritter and he was like, remind everybody that the ultimate steal is done in nine days. So nine days to get in there and uh, do the, not the, it's, they have the early bird, then they have the regular stretch. And now it's the, I can't remember what they call it. Can you scroll down, Jim? Uh, Jim? I almost called him James. Um, it, oh, it's the end of the, yeah, something, uh, uh, tail end prizes. So there is still tons and tons of amazing knives you can win. Uh, when you look at this page and you scroll down past the regular prizes, you will be stunned at how many other prizes are still left. And I have a couple picked out uh, because I am like uh, always uh, late in getting to the so we've been we've been helping support the ultimate steel we have not yet paid our dues to the ultimate steel so that's coming uh well i guess today after this podcast and it puts us it makes me eligible makes uh 
for all of these. If you keep scrolling, man, oh man. Yeah, look at this. Amazing. It just keeps going. So I thought I had one picked out and then I kept going and I was like, ooh. Uh, there's a John Gray Pickall style dagger in there that, or not dagger, but Pickall style knife in there that looks cool. That looks cool. I mean, these all look amazing. Now, of course, uh, there's a safari there. You've got firearms. You've got other things. Uh, but of course, uh, it depends on how much you pay. I don't think you're going to win a safari for giving them 50 bucks. So um, in any case, let's help support knife rights. Let's donate to the ultimate steel in the last nine days. Uh, we have to do so. I'm sure they take money all year round. But if you do it now in the next nine days, you stand to win, uh, you know, some amazingly outsized uh Thank you, prize. So please, please. Uh, Ultimate Steel, I know that there's a preemption bill up in Ohio, my home state uh, where I was born. And, uh, you know, these knife preemption laws are great because what they do is they collapse the borders between counties in terms of laws. So you can't be live in one county that has one set of knife laws and then go to the county next door where you work and be a felon because you have a knife that's perfectly legal in your county. So a preemption bill makes it a statewide uh, kind of thing. So th these are the kind of things that uh, Knife Rights works on, getting it so that you can live in your state and move freely about your state from county to county without worrying about what's in your pocket. Um, and so much more, so much more, especially with the automatic knives. Um, I know they've been fighting in my state of Virginia uh, for a while and due to politics, it's, you know, it hasn't been successful yet, but they've done it in 26 states and, uh, knife rights. Let's, let's, uh, give them some money, help them keep going so that we can keep being obsessive about this little hobby of ours. All right. I want to announce a couple of new gentlemen junkies. Gentleman Junkie is the top tier of support on Patreon for the Knife Junkie uh, podcast. We have the $3 a month level traditional junkie. We have the $5 a month uh, tactical junkie. And then we have the $10 a month gentleman junkie. And of course, that doesn't mean you have to be a gentleman. You can be a, a lady or a gentlewoman, if you will. And uh, you can uh, be eligible for a monthly knife giveaway as a gentleman junkie. And we just sent off, actually, I'm lying. I haven't sent it off. It's right here. Uh, but it is the Actinon Verba Z300 headed to the mailbox, uh, uh, headed to the post office tomorrow with a bunch of other boxes to go out to the winner. Uh, and actually, this this uh, this one was um, Joseph Strykars. So he has his coming. And uh, so every month, if you're a gentleman junkie, you get put on the wheel of destiny. We spin it. We see who wins the knife. It's awesome. So we have three new ones this uh, this week. We have Christopher Wolf. Thank you, Christopher. We have a Chris Wolf, but this is Christopher Wolf, uh, different spelling. And uh, thank you, Christopher. It's great to have you here. Uh, you're an active contributor on Thursday Night Knives, and it's great to hear your voice and and. Um, and your contribution. Thank you, sir. Same with Sean, Sean M. He's a new uh, a gentleman junkie. As a matter of fact, uh, this past week on Thursday Night Knives, when we had the knife giveaway, uh, Sean M, like before I was showing off the knife, boom, he became a patron right then because I think he wanted that one in particular. So Sean became a, a gentleman junkie just as we were spinning the wheel. And, uh, and then we have Tyler Holler, a brand new gentleman junkie. Thank you, all guys so much for your support um i like to break it down like this when someone is willing to trade money that they worked hard to earn for something that i can offer like this show uh it's it's uh humbling so i'm i'm very grateful thank you so much it's greatly appreciated um so if you think what we do here is good, like these gentlemen do, and you want to help support us and you get uh, uh, exclusive content like extras off the interviews and uh, and other things, please check us out on Patreon. The quickest way to get there is to go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the knife. 
Okay, so you know that sometimes I dish on the James brand, on James brand. I call it the James brand because there was that band in the 70s, the James band. And so I can't, I can't get, get my, I can't get it straight, but James brand uh, is a knife company that is made of designers. I think some of them came from Nike, but you know, uh, product designers that have come from the upper echelons of uh, the upper echelon of product design, you know, some of the things that we are the most popular and that we spend the most money on. And they became knife designers. Obviously, they didn't just become knife designers. Obviously, there's a love for knives in there. And they followed that passion after leaving whatever giant corporation they were working for. And they started James Brand. And I oftentimes call them hipster knives. And it's, I don't know why I do that. Uh, because they consistently come out with really um, good looking things. And you know how much aesthetics mean to me. Uh, and I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a little bit of jealousy. jealousy. Maybe I wish I had designed these cool knives. Well, anyway, James Brand has come out with uh, four of their uh, kind of flagship, um, what do you call it? Flagship knife models. We have the Duval, the Chapter, the Wayland, and the Pike. And they are now releasing them in a special line that feature um, rosewood handle inlays. And rosewood is beautiful. I've always loved guitars and I love a rosewood neck, rosewood fingerboard. Um, and that's what these remind me of. So you got rosewood inlays on the handles and you have beautiful Damasteel blades. So Damascene, Damascus style blades uh, that, that fold into these beautiful titanium handles that are sort of uh, blasted and treated and inlaid with, with rosewood. Excuse me. Uh, so, and I, I think that these are the pinnacle uh, versions of these four knives. Uh, if I were to get a James Brand knife, which I do not have, I would like to get one in the future at some point. But the one that I want is that new integral uh, uh, folder, you know, frame lock folder. I can't remember the name of it right now, but to me, that's the that's the James Brand knife I want. But these gorgeous little slip joints have. Uh, uh, have kind of turned my eye a little bit. I can't remember which one the one with the with the sheep's foot blade is. Um, what is it? The Wayland, I think it is. Uh, with that, uh, not the sheep's foot, with the Warncliffe blade. I think that that is incredible. The third from the left, that thing is incredibly beautiful. They're all very nice, but that one to me is just a knockout. That's like uh, you go to the wedding and that's what you carry. Beautiful knife. Anyway, uh, James Brand... Uh, constantly earning my earning my respect but but getting my ire i don't know why <laughs> i don't know why i love you guys i got to get you on the show i got to talk to you because i don't know maybe it's one of those sort of like um maybe it's one of those things where you see two people who are very combative and you're like when are they just going to get together and admit they love each other uh so maybe it's one of those situations i don't know but uh james brand four of their classic knives out in rosewood inlays and damasteel next up on knife life news shirogorov another brand that i haven't experienced but that i have massive respect for you know sometimes i'm embarrassed by some of the knives i haven't uh experienced honestly uh that you know uh koenig Arius. it took me going to atlanta to check one of those out um and I discovered that the hype is real. Well, here is the the new Shirogorov Quantum. This is their Gen Two of the Quantum. Uh, I believe this is a is this a Sinkovich design? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look into it. I cannot remember. Uh, I don't think it is. Otherwise, it would mention it in this article, no doubt. But the the Quantum is a uh, when it first came out. I remember it was a Quantum Leap knife for them. They did a lot of things differently, and uh, uh, it's trying trying to up their game, advance their game a little bit. Uh, well, this version of it retains the overall um, silhouette uh, and shape and spirit of the original, but they're really slimming it down and uh, lightening it up. So first, you know, the most obvious uh, uh, evidence of that is you look at the handle scales and they've done an awful, <clears throat> excuse me, an awful lot of pocketing on the outside uh, while still pocketing on the inside. So um, if you if you can imagine a, a bridge work, you know, the, the lattice pattern uh, 
All right, I'm going to stop that. Uh, but it's pocketed on the inside and the outside. And the outside pocketing not only offers a weight relief, but it also gives your your hands, your fingers as they wrap around great little pockets uh, for a purchase. They even, if you look at it, they even mimic uh, the sort of differing lengths of your fingers with the uh, with the one pocket, then the one up above, and then the one down below. Um, anyway, uh, looks really like a great. I mean, I think it's a beautiful knife. It's like a long, slender clip point with a really long clip. And then the other thing they did to lighten up this knife is in the blade itself. Uh, they took it from a four millimeter stock to a 3.5 millimeter stock. And that might not seem like much, uh, but it's, you know, reducing it by a quarter. And that's not nothing. Uh, I think it's a beautiful knife. I'm interested to see uh, what friends of the show get it. Um, I don't know if we have too many Shirogora fans. Maybe Thursday Night Knives. That seems like this seems like the kind of knife uh, um, President Merkin Muffley would would go for. Uh, that's his uh, Instagram, uh, James Moore, uh, aka President Merkin Muffley. Looks like his kind of a knife. James, let me know if if you get it. I want to check it out. I'd love to check it out. Um, if you want to check out some cool stuff that you can wear and impress people by the kind of podcast you listen to, like say the knife junkie, uh, you can go to the knife junkie.com slash shop. And there you will find merch like the, the hoodie that you see um, either my parents wearing, or you see Jared Neve wearing from time to time on his, uh, on his shows. Um, the knife junkie, Logo designed by my sister. Uh, we can get on a lot of different products, or you can also get the uh, the other ones like the um, "Don't Take Sharp for an Answer" uh, or "Don't Take Dull for an Answer" uh, tea, um, and uh, just a, a whole variety of other logos and uh, designs that Jim has created. Um, go to theknifejunkie.com/shop. Check out our merch. What can I say? All right. So still to come is the state of the collection. And we also have the top 12 folders with neutral handles. Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us. Jake from Bearded Gear has uh, had many a knife come through his hands. He's uh, done hours and hours of great reviews. Uh, he's also an outdoorsman. He's, he uses these knives out in the out of doors and has really developed his own tastes and, uh, and uh, preferences. And he has done what others have done before him. And this is what I love because this is a true knife nut, true knife junkie taking a foray into the knife making world. He designed a knife with a buddy of his and they created a company called Luft Concepts. And here's a cool little uh, side story. It's named Luft Concepts. Luft is the German word for air and they both love air cooled Porsches, which I love. I love Porsches myself. So Luft is the name of the company and this is their first knife. It's in prototype form right now and it's called the uh, Avant after the Audi Avant. Oh, wait. Before I even open it down here on the knife cam, let's go back to the main camera because I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it before you even see it. Listen. I'm not sure if that comes through, so I'll try it one more time. Listen, listen for the ring. Ah. Uh. All right. So when you flip open the Avant by Luft Concepts, uh, <laughs> you, the first thing you hear is a ting. And uh, I've been, I've had this knife for about four days. It's on loan to me um, until I have Jake back on the show. He's going to be on the show uh, uh, sometime coming up real soon. We're going to talk about this knife and his whole process uh, that it took to make this uh, come to fruition and where it has to go from here. <clears throat> so I've had this for a number of days and I've been sitting there flipping it, wondering what it is about that ting that I love. And I think I just figured it out right here, right now. And I think it's that, remember, well, from time immemorial, we've been watching movies and people draw swords. And when they do, it's shing. Well, that's what this is doing. Every time you open it, you can hear that ting. And why is it tinging? This is the important part. The reason it is tinging and making that gorgeous sound is because this blade is uh, basically a flipper straight razor. It is 
hollow ground on both sides, full height hollow grind, nearly full height. I mean, okay, the hollow grind doesn't come up here, but this is this is part of the opening system. That this is the blade. This is a full height hollow grind. It is like a straight razor. Listen, I mean, uh, when you when you when you just uh, you can just hear how thin and how sharp this thing is. It is uh, an absolute razor blade. Um, and, and I can't get over how impressive that is because, you know, it, it feels even thinner. I, I haven't done any measurements, but it feels even thinner than my Civivi uh, hollow ground blades, which are always quite thin and quite well hollow ground. And actually I have one right here. And yeah, it feels even thinner than a Civivi. Um, and to me, that's just incredibly impressive. It's on a, it's on a platform that uh, is smaller but mimics or not mimics, but, uh, you know, takes advantage of this sort of setup. I, I feel like it has, uh, it, it's got a spiritual, uh, ancestor in the PM two. It just in terms of the handle to blade ratio and this area right here, and just kind of the, how comfortable it is and how it grips. And you can choke back here and have an incredible grip and saber grip. You can come up here and take advantage of this, uh, neutral area here. Um, but it also, uh, bears some, um, uh, not resemblance. Yeah, I guess it bears a little resemblance to my pocket knife today, uh, in the, in the butt end of it. I really like this area of the Avant's handle and I feel like I would like it, uh, on the strider a little bit differently, um, if it were angled more like this. So it, it shares some of the same, uh, let's see, what am I trying to say? The, the, the aft part of the handle of the Avant takes some of what is good about the aft part of the handle in the Strider knives, that is the, this widening out and then this drop down angle, but it gets the angle better, in my opinion, for my hand. And of course they're different sizes, so uh, that's something you have to take into account. But I feel like this knife really takes um, cues from a lot of great knives and and puts them together in this awesome package. Uh, I think it's on washers. I have not taken it apart yet, but my feeling is it's on washers, which I love. Uh, it's got this great um, sort of uh, wire pocket clip, which we all love. It's got this awesome large opening hole that allows all sorts of different, you know, slow rolling, thumb flicking, spidey flicking. Uh, it's got this great low profile flipper. I'm really into this these days. You know, I'm not a huge flipper guy, uh, but I do like the low profile flippers. Here's one uh, from from Aurora, uh, the Aurora from uh, Crystal Knives. Uh, you think of the Think of the Vero engineering knives, you know, low profile. And when you, when you follow your hand down the, down the dorsal side of the, the handle, there's barely any disruption. Uh, so if, if you're someone who carries multiple items in your knife pocket, you're not going to have to worry about this too much, uh, chipping away at whatever's in there. This uh, knife also has a, a really nice, um, canvas micarta handle. Uh, the, the show side is just the micarta, right? Nope. Nope. I take it back. There are liners in there. They're so, so well nested that, uh, I thought only the lock side had liners. They both have liners. So that's good because my Carta, I hear my Carta, uh, you need liners. Unlike G10. Uh, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but so nicely done, Jake. Congratulations. I'm not sure exactly at what stage of development this knife is. Uh, we will talk about that on the show when you come on, but man, I am so incredibly impressed by the grind on this blade and just the sharpness of it and the, I don't know, it's a bold design. I really like it. Nicely done. So I have this for a couple of weeks and then I will send it on to someone else. Uh, this has been doing the rounds. Uh, Stasa 23 had this one before me. So, you know, it got, uh, it got well used and uh, it got his excellent eye on it. Uh, I have purposefully been not watching the videos on this. I will watch them after I talk to him about it. I, I want to go in, you know, fresh and unsullied. <clears throat> okay. Well, 
So that's it for the state of the collection this week. Actually, this week has been all about making close-up videos of knives that I've accumulated, uh, that I've been borrowing, that people have sent me. So if I've had your knife for longer than the three weeks I said I'd have it, I do apologize, but I have a bunch of boxes over here and I made a bunch of videos and I have a couple more to do. Um, so the state of the collection is right there. And, and also, uh, I haven't gotten anything new for my own collection uh, because I'm saving up for something that I will be buying this week. And it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's something you've seen before. Um, and it's uh, on the secondary market and it's, you know, it's not terrifically expensive. It is expensive, uh, but compared to kind of the new, you know, you just kind of keep going down this rabbit hole. It's not as expensive as, as it would have seemed a couple of years ago. Let me put it that way. Uh, but it's a classic. And I've been talking about how I want one of these for a long time. So we'll see, or you'll see, and I'll have, and I can't wait. Okay. Now, uh, top 12 folders with neutral handles. This knife that I have coming will fit in this category, but we're not going to talk about it because I don't have it yet. So what am I talking about when I talk about neutral handles? Uh, we have a tendency, I have a tendency to really gravitate towards things that nestle in the hand. This is a pretty neutral handle. Maybe this is not the best example. So I will use the strider I've been showing, but so this knife has some neutrality to it in the handle, uh, but really it commits you to a, uh, to a couple of different grips. You're either in this grip because of this giant choil and the wedge shape of the handle, or you're in the choked up grip in the choil. This is the most comfortable way to hold a Strider, uh, SNG or SMF, in my opinion. Uh, you can hold it back here, but then you have this stabbing into your palm or, I don't know, this is not the most comfortable when you're all the way back here. Uh, so this is not a neutral handle because it really kind of forces you into a, a couple of grips. <clears throat> uh, I feel like there was a period of time where I was very impressed by multiple finger choils and, and curvy handles and uh, super, uh, you know, uh, super contoured and shaped handles. And that if it melted into your hand and it felt like part of your fist, that was what you were really going for. But then I started to discover how valuable it is to, to be able to change your grips, to switch your grips and to, and to feel a certain um, a freedom in changing up the orientation of the tip and the edge. And the only way you really feel that freedom is if the grip is comfortable in doing so. Um, so that's when I started to discover the, the joy of a neutral handle like this like this Quaken, I can hold it like this, uh, tip down, edge in for a defensive thing just as easily as I can tip up, edge out for uh, making fire sticks. So this is the ultimate neutral handle right here, two parallel lines, uh, you know, and a blade. Okay, so these are gonna be folders though, and some of them more neutral than others, but they all basically have the same vibe. And so first I'm gonna start with the with one that's been in my pocket a lot this season, and that's the TRM Atom. And this one is the DLC coded Atom that I got uh, right around mid August. Uh, this is a double dot line, which means that they had some, um, you know, when they were DLC coding the knives, blades that had some little imperfections. There's mine. Uh, went on to knives and got sold at a fraction of the cost of one that's perfect and pristine. And uh, I got this and that little, <laughs> that little imperfection does not bother me. And then, um, and then Marianne was, a, was, was sweet enough to put on these uh, G Carta scales that I love so much uh, that were, that were on sale at the time. And, uh, and so this is a prized knife of mine. It means a lot to me, but also this handle is is so incredibly comfortable and there's nothing to it uh you know it does taper off at the butt it's not two parallel lines uh, it does have a little bit of uh, curvature here to be comfortable but all in all it is a knife that you could use in any grip really any grip tip down edge in tip down edge out feels great um 
all all of the forward grips are awesome. You can even choke up on this knife. Uh, like the Avant I was showing before, it's got this little neutral area right below the pivot where you can just kind of choke up and get as close as that ed to that edge as possible. And uh, so this gives you ultimate freedom, this uh, TRM handle. So this is one definitely one of the most used recently, but I've, I have been gravitating more towards the neutral handles lately. A perfect example of a non-neutral handle would be something like, uh, think, of, think of the Voyager by Cold Steel. Um, though you can grip it in a lot of different ways, um, it does force you into a couple of positions there. All right, next is the Civivi Asticus, a name that still makes me giggle, Asticus. <laughs> All right, so this has a uh, also has a very small sort of uh, neutral thumb stud too, which I like. You know, we were talking about the little thumb studs before. This knife uh, is just one of those. This, they, they were firing on all cylinders when they designed this one. I do like Civivi knives, and they have, uh, they've created a lot of really great uh, same but different kind of knives. But this one really is different to me. Uh, it's bigger than most Civivis, so it's got a very nicely sized blade. It's like a 3.8-inch blade, but it's very thin. So it's a large knife, but it's a thin knife. Very, very thin. And, the, and you can see that they... From this uh, aspect, you can see how much weight relief went into these scale, uh, into these uh, steel liners, and a lot. And so it's light, it's thin, and it's tough, and it's got a big blade, and that hollow ground blade is so excellent. But look at the handle. This is really what I'm, what I'm interested in. It has the general curve to accommodate the human hand. Um, as I've mentioned many times before, and as many have others have mentioned, our hands are optimized and designed for sticks. We're on a hunting platform, throwing spears, hitting things. Uh, and that's with sticks, not with heavily contoured, um, ergonomically, um, ergonomically lavish and spoiling um, handles. It's sticks. And this is kind of like picking up a little slightly curved stick. I think this Asticus is if if you have never had a Civivi or if you're if you need convincing about Civivi or you just want a new one, get an Asticus. And not only is this a great knife, but this one is the Plain Jane in G10. They have it in JG10. They have it in Coca Bolt, not Coca Bolo, um, some sort of wood. Uh, they have a diamond wood, maybe. They have it in all sorts of different handle skills. I think they even have a brass version of this. Such a great knife because this blade. Is incredible. Uh, great EDC blade, great kind of self defense blade. If heaven forbid you need it, great steak knife. You know, you're going out to dinner. You're you're spending your money on a steak. You don't want to use that damp, wooden handled, loose bladed, dull saw knife they give you. You want to use something capable and classy. And I think the Civivi Asticus could fill that role. What do you think? All right, next is another favorite uh, in the sort of budget-ish realm. And, uh, I, you know, um, Chinese, awesome manufacturer. This is Concept Knives. That was a bad flick on my, uh, my, my left hand is off today. Let me see. There we go. With authority. Uh, so Concept Knives, we know them. They are a couple of people, a couple of outcasts from Kaiser Knives. I don't know if they're outcasts, but they're people who used to work for Kaiser Knives, uh, created the, the company Concept. We know about the quality and the design and the fit and finish of Kaiser. Uh, some, you know, um, opinions differ about where they fit in the pantheon of awesome Chinese manufacturers. Uh, I, like many, think it's like Riot is the tops and then we and then Kaiser probably. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just think Riot is the tops. So, so I'm not sure where all these others fit in, but I think Concept, who has just sort of marched in uh, and taken over recently, is killing it. They first of all, they have a wide variety of different models and they work with a with a wide variety of designers. This this is the Main Street. Uh, even though it's labeled this is from their first run, it's it's mistakenly labeled Little Main Street. 
Um, but this is designed by Dirk Pinkerton, a favorite uh, uh, on my show. I love that guy. I love his work, um, and I have a I have a custom of his that I that I am quite fond of. But I across the board dig his designs and have massive respect for his grinding skills. So these are the kind of uh, talented designers and makers that concept is collaborating with, and I love it. And here, this handle on the main street is really comfortable in any position. Chiefly, of course, the, the main uh, sort of saber grip, Filipino grip here, but in reverse grip, tip down, edge out, it's amazing. You have this uh, perfect hump for your uh, thumb to hook over, but if you prefer in a self-defense situation, tip down, edge in, that same spot is perfect to hook your thumb over. It works in both directions, like, exactly perfectly so this is a this is a great neutral handle and just a great knife this one um unlike many of the chinese knives that that i buy and and i, I don't mean to keep putting a an emphasis on the chinese nature of it but but there is a reason and that is that uh i don't buy too many high-end chinese knives but i do buy a lot of these sort of mid-range and low-end chinese knives and i think that they're awesome um but I tend not to carry them as much. I tend to just have them in the collection and um, maybe use them around the house and that kind of thing. But um, because I have a number of other knives like this, um, for instance, this Strider or some American knives that I just prefer to carry. And But this did a lot of time in my waistband. This is a great in the waistband backup knife. It's nice and thin. The handle is neutral in all aspects. Um, so you're not getting any, uh, you know, it's thin this way. It's thin and uh, choil free and such in this aspect. I can't say enough about how much I love this knife. And so I think I'm going to stop right here. Uh, but Dirk Pinkerton, love you, man. I love your knife designs. All right. Next <clears throat> is the Crystal Aurora. I always call it the Crystal, like, but I'm not sure why. So I'm just going to, I'm going to just start calling it Crystal Aurora. It's the Crystal Aurora, uh, a beautiful Ivan Braganet's design uh, made. Uh, I'm not sure where it's made, uh, but it's a Russian knife, Russian in um, uh, the company that Crystal is a Russian company uh, designed by a Russian guy, uh, Ivan Braganet's. Not sure where it was manufactured. Uh, comes to me from um, Levon of the Knife Nuts podcast. He has a cool fledgling business and by fledgling i mean i think he's doing a bang up business i just mean he hasn't been doing it so uh, too terrifically long uh but uh he's importing uh he's an importer exporter my people understand this no uh he's uh importing knives from russia and he's brought in a bunch of really really cool designs and this to me is chief among them in terms of coolness this is the ivan braganets uh, designed Aurora. You've got that really outstanding fuller there. That's what really drew me in on a almost symmetrical spear point blade, um, which is has a really uh, quite a generous stock thickness on the spine. But due to this fuller, by the time you get to the edge, it is super thin behind the edge. This thing is really a slicey, slicey knife, which I love. And I would imagine, you know, I should actually put my money where my mouth is and try cutting cheese with this because I have a feeling that that fuller would just be make this the perfect cheese knife. Uh, ow, sorry, that was my knee. Uh, perfect cheese knife, but also with this neutral handle, the perfect carry knife because you can do all sorts of things with it. Here it is in reverse grip, tip down, edge out. You've got the perfect little peak to put to hook your thumb over and you've got nothing, no place to try and get your fingers to fall into, into line. So you've got big sausage fingers and giant meat hooks, or you've got delicate uh, uh, hand model hands like mine. Either way, they're going to fit perfectly on this, on this uh, neutral handle. And by the way, this one tip down edge in is also really, really nice because what it does is uh, it conforms this sort of straight hair, straight neutral spot on the uh, pectoral side of the handle fits perfectly in the palm to curve that blade inward just a little 
and then you have this thumb cap right here and it makes it a good sort of uh ripping tearing pakal style knife so this crystal aurora is right up there with awesome neutral handles but just because it's a neutral handle doesn't mean it's not very grippy and this one is very grippy due to these uh, strips of milled ridges let's see if i can get that to focus milled ridges right here in the uh in the handle there on that side uh there we go on that side and on the clip so it's easy to draw from your pocket and then once it's in hand it is very grippy very grippy without being overtly or overly so the one uh gripe i have about this knife is the ceremonial jimping it's ceremonial only for the thumb on the back of the handle it's more just like for reference or indexing but it does not do any gripping but not a deal breaker not a deal breaker i love that knife all right next up is the rock wall from tactile knives this is a great neutral handle. Yes, it has a little swale here, a uh, little place, again, for reference so that you know when, you're, uh, when your forefinger is there, you're in the right place. But uh, just a great knife, beautiful knife. Everything about this knife is kind of neutral in a pleasing way. And what I mean by neutral, mm, that's maybe understated is what I mean. You've got this really nice drop point blade with an excellent point i love how this knife comes you know it's it's not an abrupt point it's a nice gradual point so it's and then it's swedged this would be great for puncturing i don't think i have but like if you had to uh rest some sort of product eagerly from a clamshell like a thick clamshell this would be the perfect knife for that because of that point i really uh i really appreciate that but look at the handle just a just two nearly pa parallel lines. You have a little uh, angle here, a little um, change of angle here, um, but just perfectly neutral and perfect for um, any kind of hand. And that's the important thing with a knife this size. This is a three inch or just under three inch uh, bladed knife. And let's see, uh, one, two, three and a half, three and three quarters inch handle. So it's not a huge handle. So supposing I had giant meat hook hands uh, and there are a bunch of choils and dips and, and wedge type shapes and stuff, it's going to be uncomfortable. Uh, this is going to fit any hand. Any hand is going to be able to grip this. And by the way, uh, my seven-year-old dot, well, she's six and a half, but she's looking forward to seven, uh, loves this knife because it feels great in her hand too. So also it's, it's she likes it. She's, uh, I think she's got an appreciation for the finer knives in my collection, which is a little frightening for when teenagedom comes along. Dad, can I borrow the keys? And a Sabenza. Next up is, I guess it's the ultimate neutral handle. Let's take a look at this. This is the Lucha. This is the, the awesome Kershaw um, butterfly knife, Bally Song. Sorry. Sorry. Bally Song. Uh, this thing is about as neutral as it comes in all directions. And yet, with this milling on the side, it, it really feels secure in hand. And uh, it does, if you look at it, it does have a bit of a wedge shape, you know, in that it is a little bit thinner here where the pivot and the handle meets the blade than it is down here where the lock is. Also, that lock, even though, you know, it's it's pretty firmly in there. But when it's nudged far enough, it pops out. Even though it's not going to keep the knife in your hand, having that lock there for reference to know when you are at the end of that handle is a good thing. Uh, you can feel the handle widen ever so slightly as you get towards the pommel. And, and that is good. And you know once you've had this long enough that if your thumb is extended a certain amount, it's going to touch that little quilly in there and you know where you are. Uh, but that's the one thing about a neutral handle like this is almost symmetrically neutral. That's what I'm saying. The uh, the clip here or knowing that this clip is here, the lock. And if you feel that in your palm, you know that the edge is oriented in the proper direction. So this is what I'm trying to say. Too neutral and you might have indexing problems. 
Uh, if it's a double-edged knife, like a dagger, and everything's perfectly symmetrical, it doesn't really matter because you know you're going to have an edge presented uh, at all times, basically. But on a knife like this, without that lock, without knowing and feeling, in the dark, I wouldn't know if this is uh, which way that edge is oriented. So just an interesting thought, and maybe not one that is uh, pertinent to everyone's lifestyle, but you want to know at least if you need to use a knife in less than ideal lighting or less than ideal circumstances, you want to know which way the edge is oriented. So um, a little clue, a little hint somewhere uh, is good. And, and on this knife, which is so perfectly neutral, uh, that clasp lock is the thing. All right, next up, uh, this is a knife that uh, I was talking about, Chinese manufactured knife knives. This is one of my absolute favorites. This is the Riot K2, just a beautiful Tanto. To me, this is the probably the handsomest Tanto in my collection, and that's uh, for a while, that's how I was collecting them. And here's a little hint. I was talking about the knife I have incoming. It also is a Tanto. So what Tanto knife... What tanto blade am I always talking about that I I really like? If if you if you know, I would be impressed or or unimpressed. Man, you listen to too much of this show. Uh, so this handle is though contoured is quite neutral. Contoured. Uh, if you look at it in its cross section, you'll see it's rounded in that direction, and also you'll see. Here's a here's an area where your forefinger goes. It comes down. It takes a little break and turns this way. You have this little jimped area, this little hook. Well, that's about as um, complex as it gets because this knife... Uh, okay, here's a caveat. You are not taking this knife out into the forest uh, to do your, your wood processing and your, and your uh, bushcraft stuff, okay? I know that. I get that. But let's just say, for instance, it's in your pocket and you're taking a three-hour trip with a workmate to a different office. And to do so, you have to drive through the New Jersey Pine Barrens, let's just say. And you break down, and something happens, and, you, <laughs> and, no, one, and no one comes and gets you. And your cell phone coverage isn't there. Can't, so you end up in the woods. We're going to have to be here overnight, buddy. Let's start, let's start collecting some wood. Let's make a campfire. I'm going to make... Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to carve this steak and uh, and we're going to pound it into the ground and we're going to put this tarp over us and then I'll make a feather stick. Luckily, I have my Riot K2. Okay, there's your situation. So say you have to hold this not in this prescribed grip and you need to hold it like this to do that reverse chest pull thing that you see bushcrafters do when they're carving steaks. You do not feel... A th this is almost more secure in this reversed grip here. And I'm not talking about reverse grip this way, of course, tip down. I mean reverse grip, tip up still. Not only uh, does the clip offer a great place to for your finger to grab around, but this, um, this little arc that fits so nicely between your fingers fits really nicely in the palm, in the well of the palm. So both forward grips, great. Both reverse grips, also great. You have this awesome little run of jimping here on the pommel. Everything fits nicely. You flip it this way. You have that same benefit of that arc fitting into your into your uh, into your palm there. So this thing is great in all grips. It doesn't look neutral on first uh, first blush because of all this milling and because of the uh, the contouring from top to bottom. But it it is comfortable in all grips. This is an outstanding knife. Uh, if you've ever been on the fence about it. Well, I'd say get off the fence and get one if you can, because it is an awesome knife. All right, next. A classic, probably one of my all-time favorite folders. Uh, it's the VSEP from Les George. A couple of things here that I have to talk about before I talk about the neutral handle, and that is on the handle. It's that chamfering around the lock bar cutout. Let me see this. I mention it a lot because... There are other high-end expensive knives like this Strider knife that don't do that. And listen, you hear that? That's flesh being scraped off my thumb just by brushing by this cutout. Come on, man. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. It's the thing. Uh, 
I I was saying, come on, man, long before that guy was. Uh, but anyway, uh, all I mean to say is, you know, I'm spending 600 bucks. I didn't spend 600 on this, but I think new, you know, I'm spending a lot of money on this knife. You can't just knock down this super sharp edge right here. Just knock it down. Just a touch. Just like two seconds with sandpaper would take care of that. Uh, all right. So Les George built that into his design. Um, and it is, it's a little touch, but it is luxury. All right. These are luxury items. Let's not be fooled. No one needs a VSEP. Sorry, Les. No one needs any of these knives. They are luxury items. So treat them as such. If you're going to charge me 600 bucks for your Strider, give me a luxury item, buddy, because that's what it is and admit it. Uh, and do a little chamfering here around the, the lock bar cutout. Okay. That being said, incredible knife. This is just an incredible knife. Beautiful blade, incredible ergonomics. And, and look at that handle. What is it? There's a little finger notch there, a little finger groove, and then it's two, uh, two sides that are nearly parallel that taper off. Like it is perfect and neutral. There is no grip that does not work as well as the other. Even if you have that uh, finger choil in where your thumb meets your hand in a backwards grip like this. Chest pull. Uh, feels great. In reverse grip, tip down, edge out. You have this peak to wrap your thumb over. It's perfect. Edge in, even better. Perfectly neutral handle on a perfectly gorgeous knife. I love this design. I love every iteration of it. Uh, the All the different ProTech versions of it. Uh, the custom versions of the Rock Eye. This is, this is the... Uh, this is based, this is a mid-tech production knife based on the custom rock eye. Every iteration of this design is absolutely gorgeous to me. Next up is the Emerson designed ZT0640. And uh, I've been carrying this one a lot the last couple of days. I, I'm considering having it reground by BGM Knives by uh, John Miller. I love this knife, love everything about it. It is pretty thick behind the edge. And uh, I, I do love a hollow ground knife. Um, so I'm thinking I might, I might have him do that. But the handle I have noticed recently is so neutral. I mean, even, so most blades, most handles are not neutral in this sort of saber grip where you have your thumb forward on a thumb ramp. Usually, if you turn it over, you lose that ability to push forward on a thumb ramp thing because you have, like, say, on the VSEP, you, you have to kind of shove your finger in that nook there, and that's not very comfortable. Um, but in a, in a saber grip with the edge up, this 640, and I'm not sure why you would need to do this, but in this grip, uh, the 640 is just about equal as it is in the, in the regular grip with the edge edge down. Incredibly uh, handsome knife and and iron. it's not irony. It's uh, surprising. Let's just say it's surprising to get such incredibly neutral ergonomics from an Ernest Emerson knife. Let's face it, he his knives are super ergonomic. You know, your 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 fingers are locked in. Your hand is locked in usually. There are a couple of like the 7 and the 6 and the um, and the 100, and there, there are some knives that are more neutral, like the 100 is just about as neutral as it gets. But, um, but I always think of Emerson for the awesome ergonomics, and uh, ergonomics don't have to be complicated to be awesome. Here is incredible, here are here is an example of incredible handle ergonomics while being incredibly simple. Next up is the off grid knives Scorpion, this is made by Wee Knives. Uh, just a great, wonderfully built knife, beautifully designed knife. One that reminds me a little bit, as I mention all the time, of the SOCOM Elite. And that's in the handle. And I know if you put them next door to each other and look at them, they don't really look the same. But something about them uh, really, I don't know, they, they seem similar to me. Um, but this one has, even though it's got a main curve, so from the pivot to the first body screw, it's one angle. And then it takes a turn towards the pommel. The turn is extremely subtle, so much so that this knife is comfortable in any grip. Uh, even almost that saber, that reverse saber grip. 
Uh, but here, let me try it. So great ergonomics like this. Of course, this is a one I really love because it's got a little, a little swale, a little dip right in front of the thumb ramp. If you really want to ride up, it feels very comfortable uh, with your thumb on the back of the blade like that. But just neutrality all throughout here. Uh, boom. Now you got your saber grip. You got your hammer grip. No problem. You got your re reverse chest pull grip. No problem. Even your reverse uh, saber is not so bad uh, because there's not much of a uh, concerted notch here. So really any way you turn it reverse, this is great in reverse grip both ways. Uh, almost especially tip down edge in with the thumb feels great. So just a great neutral handle from a, uh, a current maker. I mean, these are all current makers, but uh, a guy I really like, uh, Kerry Orifice, uh, designing these out in California. This is made by Wee Knives. His other designs in that are more budget friendly are made by Best Tech, two of the best uh, Chinese manufacturers out there. All right, I guess I should just say manufacturers out there. Um, yeah, love them. All right, two more, and these are both iconic. And I know the word icon and iconic gets thrown around. Um, my wife and I were talking about this the other day, and she's like, um, yeah, Nicki Minaj is not an icon. She's a singer, and she's a popular person, and this and that, but she's not an icon. You know, an icon is like the Queen or the Statue of Liberty or the Venus of Villendorf. Those are icons. Uh, Nicki Minaj is a popular singer. Um and I will rest my case there and present this, a true knife icon. It's a knife icon. And that is this, the Sebenza 21. Who does not love this knife? You know, this knife has grown on me. Uh, I got it in 2016. And I, as I mature, <laughs> I start to like it more and more. Does that, I don't know what that means. We can have a discussion about that another time. But I love uh, the simple ergonomics of this. I love everything about this knife. Um, I love the feel of it. I love the action, that thinly ground blade, that incredible Jared Neve edge and tip, the uh, uh, micarta inlays and the way they make it feel in hand, the way they round out and give dimensionality to this hand, uh, to this handle. I love it. Um, but look at the, uh, it's like two very gently expanding parallel lines. So they start well, I guess you can't have, that's that's a contradiction in terms, but you know what I mean? Uh, they're almost parallel. They do expand a little bit towards the the butt of the, of, the, uh, of the handle. You've got awesome all the way around. Of course, we know it's comfortable in a saber grip and a hammer grip and a Filipino grip and a reverse chest pull grip and all of these sort of tip forward grips. But in the tip down grips, Man, this thing excels. This is perfect for that Pical grip because of that peak. And for my thumb, uh, the shorter side of the peak works perfectly. Uh, it's also great like this too. It's just uh, with the edge in, it, my thumb hooks ideally. Uh, this, this knife is, I love this knife. One thing I really love about when this came, I was reading the, lit the literature in the uh, package that it came with. And one of the Chris Reeve quotes is like something like this knife will be, I should have busted it out. I I'm going to, I'm going to butcher it here, but it was like, this knife will be your best friend, you know, for daily carry, uh, for, for cutting and working and, and heaven forbid self-defense. And I was like, see, that's what I like. Like he's, he's acknowledging the fact that people are not most likely not buying this for self-defense. They're buying it because they love fine knives. And this is a prestige item and it's a thing that you buy, you know, it might be something you buy to celebrate something or, you know, this is a real special item, but still it is sharp and pointy and uh, edgy and might be used for self-defense. So no matter what you're going to use this Chris Reeve knife for, knife for, it is good to go. It is ready. And I love that message. I thought that was cool you know, just acknowledging the fact that it could be used as a, you know, self-defense tool. All right. Last, this is a dedicated self-defense tool. I, I have, I, I don't, I don't know much what it would, you would do else with it. This is the, uh, Microtech Ultratech, such an awesome knife. But the reason I said what I said before is because this is the double-edged serrated dagger. So, I mean, it's just, yes, you could use this actually. This could be your EDC. Say you're, uh, 
someone who does a lot of cutting, whether it's in, just, just stay with me, uh, whether it's in construction or some sort of military duty or something, I could see you having this not just as a fighting knife. Of course, we see the dagger, we see the two edges, at, we think this is for fighting. But, you know, now that I'm sitting here looking at it, if you use your knife a lot for cutting, uh, you might use that main edge all the time for, um, you know, whatever your main cutting chore is. But then when the tough stuff comes through, oh, I got some some uh, bundling straps to cut or I've got some uh, seat belt material to cut or some... Um, fibrous rope kind of stuff and flip it over and use that. The ergonomics of this handle work great, no matter what edge you're using. So it's, you have the, the opener right here where the thumb is. And so that opener is kind of a, a tacit thumb ramp here, you know, that you brace your thumb against. But I have always found with the Ultratech and with the uh, Troodon that if you flip it and use the back edge, the, ergonomics work better for me. This is Microtech jimping. Their, their jimping is outstanding how they mill it in the aluminum. So you have down here, the lower jimping for your thumb, use that on the thumb. And then the um, push the actuation slide button thing as the choil for the, for the front finger, it works perfectly. So you can, you can flip that blade and use those serrations for whatever fibrous material you need it for and have great purchase on that handle. doesn't matter how you use it. This is like incredibly uh, neutral, incredibly neutral. So got a great grip here, even better grip here. Reverse grip works great, though uh, if you cap the, the top with your thumb, that uh, glass breaker could be an issue. Um, so that's the one caveat to this is the glass breaker because I do like to put my thumb up there. But all in all, this thing is incredibly neutral. And only in this conversation, this is a one-sided conversation, I understand. But only during this podcast do I realize this isn't just a fighting knife. You could use this as an incredible utility knife because we all know Ultratex and uh, I should say Microtex come incredibly razor sharp despite their there's sometimes interesting geometry, incredibly sharp. Um, and then you add the serrations to the top. You've got ultimate utility. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. These are my top 12 folders with neutral handles. There were others, uh, but these are the most neutral. Uh, let me rattle them off here. I've got the Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. Got the Civivi Asticus. The Concept uh, Main Street, the Crystal Aurora, the Rockwell by Tactile Knives, the Kershaw Lucha, the Riot K2, the Les George VSEP, the Emerson designed uh, ZT0640, the Off Grid Knives, Scorpion, the Sabenza, and the Ultratech. Incredible knives, incredibly neutral handles, and uh, just a great joy to use. I I'm finding myself. Maybe it's as I, as I, as I become more, more, and more of an adult male, mature type, I'm going for more neutral, more less flashy stuff. We'll see how long that lasts. I don't know. Uh, you did see my birthday knife. That was pretty flashy. Uh, but uh, in terms of my pocket knives, that's that's the direction I'm headed right now. Uh, sort of standard shapes, and uh, not not so crazy on the ergonomics. So if you want to find out my true thoughts on the matter, go to thenifejunkie.com slash 253. That has all the show notes uh, for the show, and you can also watch it right there. So be sure to visit the website, and 253 is the number of this episode. Uh, and I think that just about does it for this podcast here. So uh, be sure to like and comment and subscribe. Check us out on thenifejunkie.com. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. And of course, uh, on Thursday Night Knives, I do have to mention, we are not only live on YouTube, we're live on Facebook, and we're also live on Twitch. Uh, and then maybe someone can tell me what Twitch is. No, I'm just kidding. That's I know that's how all the young, how the, how the youngsters do it. All right. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer.
Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.